lot about Paul Cameron, so I want to get into who this guy is. Um, he actually started out his career, um, he's an academic, he's got a PhD. Um, he was at the University of Nebraska for a while, and he was conducting research on a lot of things, um, one of which was homosexuality. And so um, at some point he got aligned with some very conservative um, individuals and started doing research into origins of homosexuality and in particular things like the lifespan of the average homosexual. Uh, and he, was, he ended up being kicked out of the American Psychological Association um, because he misrepresented some research by other researchers, so he was not necessarily all that honest. Um, he was also criticized by the American Sociological Association, again, for um, mischaracterizing other re people's research. The Canadian Psychological Association uh, published uh, a statement distancing itself from him. Um, and so basically, every major uh, social science organization has um, published something repudiating Paul Cameron's ideas. And to give you an example of how sloppy his research methods were, uh, when he was doing a study on longevity of gay men, for example, he used the obituaries in uh, gay newspapers as his, the source of his material. Um, so totally skewed sample there, and, and that's just an example of one of the things. Now, and, and to suss out why that's probably a skewed sample, uh, the average person who's likely to be either reading or mentioned in a, a gay magazine, like any activist magazine, probably skews younger to begin with. Uh, <laughs> that's not a scientific survey of people who die and are gay. You'd have to actually do some work other than just, I mean, you know, this is a pet peeve of mine as somebody who was really into data mining in grad school. Yeah. You have to actually do some work to make sure that you have unbiased samples of everyone who dies and is gay. Yes. And I don't know how you do that, but that's not it. Yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, in his quest to demonstrate that um, the gay lifestyle, as he put it, was uh, somehow, um, you know, would cause you to die young or whatever. He formed this Institute for the Scientific Investigation of Sexuality in Lincoln, Nebraska. <laughs> this thing later became the Family Research Institute, so you guys are probably familiar with that name. You gotta love how they always have to tack the word science onto it yeah, in some capacity. Because they know science has some credibility in its own right, and so they figure they can piggyback on that. Yes. That's what cargo cult science is all about. Absolutely. So anyway, uh, he's the guy whose research <coughs> is most often cited by opponents of either gay marriage or um, gay parenting. And uh, to give you an example of someone who most recently used some of Paul Cameron's research, uh, there was a, a recent case in Florida, because uh, as some of you may know, Florida has a ban on gay people adopting children. You can be foster parents. You can foster children that no one else wants, people that need the best parenting out there. And in fact, a lot of gay couples had taken on uh, the HIV positive infants and, and other, you know, the, uh, the crack babies and, and other babies that just, you know, nobody else wanted to take on a kid that had special needs. And so gay parents would take these kids on and in some cases once the kids were a little older it became obvious that they weren't going to suffer the the serious side effects of uh, for example their prenatal environment uh, then they became adoptable and a lot of these kids were taken from the only home they had ever known and placed up for adoption by heterosexual married couples uh, so um, earlier this year a gay couple in florida who had been caring for um, two half-brothers for the last four years, um, filed for adoption of these two boys. And um, all of the social workers agreed that the children were thriving in their homes. Um, however, this was opposed by the state because of the ban on gay adoption. So they challenged it in court. Uh, one of the experts that was called by the state of Florida was a guy who, um, he's retired now, but he cited Paul Cameron which as part of his his um, opposition, uh, claiming that gays are more likely to be, you know, drug abusers, they're more likely to stay out late, be neglectful parents, whatever. Um, and so on cross-examination, 
um, he admitted that he also wouldn't favor placing children in the homes of, for example, Native Americans because, you know, there's a high percentage of alcoholism in, among Native Americans, and Native Americans tend to hang around each other. Therefore, you know, the kids would be exposed to this. Perfect. Yeah. So this is the kind of guy we're dealing with. Yeah. We'll take you to hell.